Okay, in our video series of ECG interpretation made easy by six step method, in this video we are going to talk about the last step ischemia and infarction. In this video, we are going to talk about subendocardial ischemia and what are the ECG changes that you will see in subendocardial ischemia. In my previous video, I talked about transmural ischemia ST segment elevation MI. In this video, we are going to talk about NSTEMI and subendocardial ischemia. Now, ischemia is the blood flow obstruction. Ischemia in the heart can occur as a transmural ischemia in which the whole thickness of the heart wall is affected. Or it can be a subendocardial ischemia in which the inner layer of the heart muscle is affected. That is called as a subendocardial ischemia. Normally, the blood supply of the heart is from the coronary arteries and coronary arteries enter the heart from outside towards inside. Therefore, the innermost aspect of the heart is receiving lesser blood supply as compared to the outer aspect. Now, whenever there is ischemia, there is increased chance that the initial damage will be to the subendocardium, the innermost part of the heart. Now, whenever these coronary arteries are blocked, the first part in the heart to be affected is the subendocardium because it is receiving lesser blood supply as compared to the outer aspect of the heart. So, initially there will be subendocardial ischemia. And subendocardial ischemia later on progresses to become transmural ischemia in which the whole wall of the heart is affected. The entire thickness of the heart wall is affected. Now, subendocardial ischemia appears different on ECG as compared to transmural ischemia. In transmural ischemia, we see ST segment elevations. In subendocardial ischemia, the classical hallmark of subendocardial ischemia is ST segment depression. Now, not all ST segment depressions indicate subendocardial ischemia. There are three different types of ST segment depression. The first one is negative deflection ST segment depression. In negative deflection ST segment depression, you will see down sloping of the ST segment. And remember, this down sloping pattern of ST segment depression is most indicative of subendocardial ischemia. The second one is no deflection or squaring off of the ST segment. In no deflection or squaring off of ST segment, the whole ST segment is depressed equally. The whole line horizontally comes down. That is called as no deflection in which there is no sloping of the ST segment. There is just deflection of the ST segment downwards. That is moderately indicative of subendocardial ischemia. Then comes the third one and the last one is that is the positive deflection in which the ST segment is moving upward. It is sloping upward like this and remember this is least indicative of subendocardial ischemia. Now remember one important thing regardless of whether the ST segment depression is mostly indicative or least indicative. If the patient is having symptoms you have to treat that patient. Regardless of the ECG changes, you will have to intervene because if you do not intervene, you will lose the patient. So, for academic purposes, for the purpose of knowledge, this is good. But in, in real practice, if the patient is having symptoms, you have to treat the patient regardless of the ECG changes. Now, let's solve this ECG. If you look at lead 1, if you look at the P wave, the PR segment, and then you look at the ST segment, the ST segment is depressed. There is ST segment depression over here. So, in lead 1, we have ST segment depression. If you look at the lead 2, in lead 2, you look at the P wave, look at the PR segment and compare it with the ST segment, the ST segment is depressed. If you look at lead 3, in lead 3, we do not have any ST segment depression. This is the QRS complex and it looks wide. If you look at AVR, AVR is not having ST segment depression, although it is showing ST, slight ST segment elevation. Now remember, ST segment elevation in one lead, not important. ST segment elevation more than one millimeter in two or more contiguous leads, two or more related leads, that is important as we discussed in our previous video. So if one lead is showing ST segment elevation, not very important. If more than one lead, if two or more than one leads are showing ST segment elevation, that is important. That should be looked for. AVL, AVL is showing somewhat depression but not very prominent depression. If you look at AVF, AVF is showing ST segment depression. Look at the P wave, look at the PR segment, look at the ST segment. If you look at V1, no, P, uh, no ST segment depression, V2, 
v3 if you look at v4 there is prominent st segment depression look at v4 look at v5 look at v6 prominent st segment depression so this is an ecg indicating subendocardial ischemia with st segment depression now coming to an important point with st segment depression t wave inversion also shows subendocardial ischemia sometimes on ecg in the initial phase when the ischemia is developing when the blood supply is obstructed before the ecg shows changes like st segment depressions the initial change sometimes is t wave inversion and t wave inversion must be taken seriously if the patient is having symptoms because t wave inversion indicates subendocardial ischemia and the t wave inversion should be at least 1 mm deep 1 mm means one small box it should be present in greater than or equal to two continuous leads it should be present in two or more leads it should be dynamic if the patient is having a previous ecg that previous ecg should not be showing any uh, t wave inversion that patient should have developed a new t wave inversion that new t wave inversion appeared on this ecg which was not present on the ecg which was taken at the arrival so it is not present in an old ecg that counts as a t wave inversion and remember an important point t wave inversion is a normal variant in lead 3 avr and v1 so you do not look at these three leads whenever you are trying to find out t wave inversion you should not look at lead 3 avr v1 other than these leads if there is t wave inversion in two or more continuous leads that indicates subendocardial ischemia now look at this ecg in this ecg look at the t wave inversion in lead 1 look at the t wave inversion in lead 2 look at the t wave inversion in avl look at the t wave inversion in lead v4 v5 v6 that is the classical t wave inversion that indicates subendocardial ischemia and remember lead 3 avr and v1 should not be considered for t wave inversion other than these leads now in this ecg these leads are not showing t wave inversion and we are not even considering these leads we are having t wave inversions in lead 1 2 lead v4 v5 v6 so that is a important significant finding in ecg and that also indicates subendocardial ischemia if you liked my video please click on the subscribe button and make sure to watch my previous videos on a uh, six step method as well as watch my videos on rhythm interpretation i have talked about sinus blocks i have talked about atrial flutter atrial fibrillation ventricular tachycardia ventricular fibrillation as well as their managements in detail in a separate playlist in summary we talked about what is subendocardial ischemia how does it appear the different patterns of subendocardial ischemia negatively deflected most indicative no deflection moderately indicative positive deflection least indicative T wave inversion also indicates subendocardial ischemia. If you liked my video, please click on the subscribe button and make sure to check out my other videos on ECG interpretation made easy and emergency medicine lectures. The link of those videos is given in the description below. Thank you very much.